Uh, hi there. Um, so, uh, so in the previous video, we uh, started talking about functions of complex variables, and um, and we discussed like different possibilities of how to represent these functions pictorially. Um, so there are like three different, at least three different possibilities, and and one of the ones that's most commonly uh, used. Um, um, at, at least uh, to begin with, is uh, is to is to make two copies of the complex plane, a z plane and the w plane, and then uh, typically the idea being that you have some curve or a figure in the z plane, and, and you have some function or a mapping that takes you from the z plane to the w plane. So uh, so how do you represent that figure in the w plane? Uh, so you make basically essentially you end up making two copies of the complex plane, and then given a function you look at look at the curve that you want to map from the z plane to the w plane and then you draw both a figure in the z plane and a figure in the w plane um, and and we've also talked about some basic algebraic operations uh, in, in in the previous videos which is uh, multiplication uh, and addition and um, so let's just see how multiplication and addition uh, are actually can be th we can think of them as very simple functions and then let's see how we can use the idea of uh, making two copies of the complex plane to uh, to to sort of um, to, to to see how functions how a multiplication addition when thought of as functions uh, act on uh, figures in the z plane and what is their effect and how we can uh, represent that effect in the w plane um, so so let's talk, let's do a couple of examples uh, based on these ideas um, so so let's and this will also bring us uh, some interesting uh, uh, interpretations of addition and multiplication. Uh, some of things, some of the uh, some of the things we've already talked about. Uh, in particular, multiplication uh, by complex numbers can be thought of as a composition of rotation and scaling. Uh, and we'll see that addition uh, by a constant, for instance, can be thought of as translation. So so let's take uh, this idea first, and let's say you have a, a function uh, w, which is uh, z plus c. Uh, so here z is a complex variable uh, and c is some complex constant. So let's write c as a constant of the form a plus ib. <clears throat> and now let's see uh, what is the, f so, so we can think of this edge. So this is a simple uh, algebraic operation like we are adding z, uh, we are adding a constant complex number c to the variable z and we end up getting a new variable w. So uh, we can think of this as simple addition or we can think of this as a function or a mapping from the z plane to the w plane um, so uh, so when we think of this as a function we can write w as u plus iv which are typical symbols used to represent uh, variables in the w plane and for z we use x plus iy and then the constant we'll say they are just two constants a and ib so we have a plus ib and this gives us, so we can combine the real parts, x plus a plus i times y plus b. And that's u plus i v. Right? And again, if two, uh, two comp if so both on both the right hand side and the left hand side of this equation, we have complex num variables. And if two complex variables are equal to each other, it means their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equals. So this gives us u is x plus a and v is uh, y plus b. So, uh, so this is one simple example of a function of a complex variable. Uh, now let's see uh, what is the effect of this function on some figure in the z plane and how it maps into the w plane. So, um, so in this particular case, uh, let's draw the figure here uh, or um, maybe, okay, so let's make a copy of the z plane here. That's the z plane, and we have a w plane here. So that's w, and that's z. So let's label the real axis as x and y for the z plane, and u and v for the w plane. And let's consider a simple figure, like let's say we have a square in the z plane uh, that goes from 0 to 1 to uh, 1 comma i, and then this point is 0 comma i, and this is 1 comma 0, and that's the origin. So this is a unit square of length 1, um, and now let's see, let's assume that a and b are positive constants. So how does this square map into the w plane? Uh, so if you, if you notice this particular expression, uh, then what we can do is we can check what's the effect on u. So u is, again, just to repeat what we found, u is this and v is x plus b, y plus b. 
so uh, so at the origin where x is 0 and y is 0 uh, the origin maps to a point u equals a and v equals b um, so for instance that point could be somewhere here u equals a and v equals b so let's make this a and this is i b um, so we might end up the origin uh, 0 comma 0 maps to the point uh, a comma i b um, and, and then we can check where the point 1 comma 0 maps to so if, if you're at the origin then u is 0 plus a and v is b so that is when x is 0 and y is 0 um, now we can check what happens to where does the point 1 comma 0 map so for 1 comma 0 u is 1 plus a and v is 0 plus b right so which means uh, we, we make a unit square, uh, so 1 plus a, which means we, we move one unit to the right, a plus 1, and we're assuming that a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0, just to make the drawing clear. So we are somewhere here, so which means, and, and v is still b, uh, v is still ib, and so we, we just have a straight line here. So this particular li line segment from 0, 0 to 1, 0 maps to this particular line segment going from a to, uh, so let's label this point, a comma i b and this point is 1 plus a comma i b um, and, and we can repeat this process for this line segment this line segment and this line segment um, and in this case it's not very hard to see that uh, in fact this entire square will simply map to another square here like this right um, where this point will be 1 plus a uh, which is right up and then i times b plus 1 so essentially what uh, this particular mapping, which is sim a simple algebraic addition, what it does is it takes this square in the z-plane and translates it, translates it, um, translates or translates the origin of the square to the point a comma i b. And therefore this particular operation or mapping uh, is called translation. Because what we've done is we've, we've taken the square and translated it into the, in the w plane, it looks like something that's been translated from the origin to the point a comma i b. Um, and so, so, so this this is another way of thinking about addition of a complex variable with a constant, um, and how it acts on, on on for instance a geometric figure that's in the z plane. Um, uh, uh, another way to sort of think about this translation is there are the two ways we can think of this as taking the square and moving it to the point a comma i b, or we can say that we have taken these coordinate axes and shifted them back to minus a comma minus i b, and from this shifted uh, perspective, so if we shift it somewhere here like this, so that this point is minus a comma minus ib. From this shifted perspective, it'll look like a square that's been translated by a plus ib. Um, so these are both equivalent ways of thinking about this translation operation, which essentially comes from a simple, uh, by taking a complex variable and then adding a co simple uh, complex constant to it. Uh, and its geometric effect can be thought of as a translation of the complex plane. Um, so, so this is one example. Um, now let's look at another example and in this case let's consider the mapping w is uh, some constant uh, let's take a specific example say 1 plus i times z right now in this case uh, notice that this is like some complex constant or i can write this as a times z where this complex constant a is 1 plus i and this is essentially multiplication of a complex variable with a complex constant 1 plus i now we've already seen in a previous video that multiplication uh, amounts to rotations and scalings. Um, so let's see how that comes about. And again, let's work with this with the example that we have. Let's again take the unit square that we were working with earlier. So we have unit square in the z plane that goes from the origin, then one comma zero, one comma i, and then this is the z plane, uh, x y, and that's the z plane. And then let's see where does it map in the w plane. So we have u and v and that's the w plane okay um so one of the ways for uh, for to, to see how this particular square uh, transforms from the z to the w plane under this mapping is to again find out what u and v are corresponding to um, the x and y that that represents the variable z so let's let's try that out um, so in this particular case we can write w as u plus i v which is 1 plus i times z 
and z is x plus i y. And now we can simplify, multiply this out. So this gives us x. Uh, so the real part will be x, and then we'll pick a pick, pick a component from here minus y plus an imaginary part, uh, which will be um, x uh, plus y. And so this gives us u is x minus y and v is x plus y. Right? Okay. So now let's again look at all these segments um, and see or maybe a couple of segments and see what the, what the, uh, what the transformation looks like. So under this particular mapping where u is x minus y and v is x plus y, uh, the origin 0 comma 0 maps to the origin because when x is 0, y is 0, uh, u is also 0, x equal to 0, y equal to 0, v is also 0. So the origin maps to the origin. Okay. Um, so where does the point 1 comma 0 map? Um, so when x is 1 and y is 0 or actually along the whole x-axis y is 0, so the whole, uh, so, so this particular segment will map to um, so when, so let's write x equals 1 and y equals 0, uh, then we find that u is 1 minus 0, it's 1, and v is 1 plus 0, 1. So this particular point maps to the point 1 comma 1, which is, so we have here, and then this particular point gets mapped to somewhere here. Let's draw this as 1 comma i, right? So v is 1 and u is 1, therefore the point in the complex plane is 1 comma i. So this entire line segment actually maps to a line segment which goes from the origin to 1 comma i. And therefore this makes an angle of 45 degree or pi by 4 with respect to the x-axis. Right? Um, another way to think about this is that along the whole x-axis y is 0. Um, since y is 0 along the whole x-axis, uh, the, the, the mapping for the x-axis is u equals x and v equals x. So the equation uh, so if so the equation for the x-axis is y equals 0 the equation that we have for this line segment in the w plane is u equals x v equals x and therefore u equals v and this is a line segment that passes through the origin making an angle of 45 degree with the x-axis and that, that's exactly what we have here um, okay now what about this line segment um, so we can use the same logic now. Now along this line segment, uh, we know that um, x is 1. So the equation for this, if, if you think of this as a whole line, then the equation is actually x, x equals 1. Um, and where does x equals 1 map uh, under this uh, transformation? We see that u is 1 minus y and v is 1 plus y. So the equation that this maps to, uh, so we can simplify and get rid of y to, to find, out a, find out a relation between u and v, and that will give us an equation in the w plane corresponding to this particular line. Uh, and that equation is, um, so if we get rid of y, we find that um, minus of u minus 1 is y, which is equal to v minus 1. And this gives us v plus u is 2. So, so it maps, so this, if, if you think of this as an extended line, then the equation in the w plane is a line of the form u plus v equals 2, which is the equation, which is again an equation for a line. Um, now, since, since we have a line, we can see, uh, we can find out two points where it passes through. Um, so we know that the point, so, so where does, where does the point, um, let, let's check where does the point 1 comma 0 lie on this line segment. So along 1 comma 0, y is 0. And so, so, um, so let's check that separately. Um, so that's the equation for the line. Now, along along the point, the one, the point one comma zero maps to u equals x is one, y is zero, u equals one, and v equals one. So this point maps to this point, which is exactly what we found from this line segment. So that's fine. Uh, and where is the point one comma one map to? Um, when x is one and y is one, then we find that u is zero. And when x is 1, y is 1, we find v is 2. So this particular point maps to the point 0, comma 2i, which is here. And therefore, we have a line segment which goes from here to here. Right? Um, and you can see from here that the equation can be written as v is uh, minus of u plus 2. Um, so so from here, uh, we, 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 can, we could have already anticipated the slope of this line segment. Um, 
which is which would be at 90 degrees to this line segment um, um, which means that under this mapping um, uh, the reason it's 90 degrees to this that line segment is because the equation for this line is v equals u and the slope for this is minus 1 the slope for the, this is 1 so the product of the slopes is minus 1 and therefore these two these two line segments are perpendicular to each other just like these two line segments are perpendicular to each other um, so uh, we can just continue this argument and, 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 and see that in fact the whole square maps to another square which looks like this um, now what is what are the parameters of this square so with respect to this square, this particular square has been rotated by 45 degrees um, uh, with respect to the x-axis. The other important thing is what are, what are the lengths of the sides of this square? Now, the length of this, the, the length of the sides of this square is one unit, whereas the length of this, uh, the, this square is, uh, since it goes from the origin to one comma i, the length is square root two. So, so the effect of this entire transformation um, on, for, for instance, this particular square, unit square, is to give us another square which is rotated by an angle of 45 degrees and scaled up by a factor of square root 2. Um, so let's write this down, summarize this, as saying that the effect of this transformation is a rotation uh, by pi by 4 and a magnification or scaling up by square root 2. Now uh, this is exactly what would be, we could have simply anticipated because we know that this particular complex number 1 plus i in the z plane it goes from the origin to the point 1 comma i. It represents this particular vector and this vector makes an angle of 45 degrees with the x-axis of pi by 4 and has magnitude square root 2. So its effect on the z-plane would be to actually transform it, actually rotate it by an angle of pi by 4 or 45 degrees and scale things up by a factor of square root 2. Um, and that's exactly what it does on this particular unit square that we've taken as, an, as, a re, as, as a representative example to see what the effect of this particular mapping is. Um, so multiplication uh, gives us rotations and scalings, whereas simple addition by a constant can be thought of as translations. So these are geometrical interpretations of the algebraic operations that we have been talking about. Um, and again, just like for translations, another way to think about this is uh, we can think of taking the square and rotating it by 45 degrees and scaling it up. That's one way. The another way is to think of the, these axes and you rotate them um, clockwise by pi by 4. So rotate the axis here. And then from this perspective, this particular square from these rotated axes, this square will look like something that's been rotated pi by 4 um, in the counterclockwise direction. Um, and then, of course, there's another operation, which is that of scaling by square root 2 in this case. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and, 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 and then we can sort of compose these operations and think about mappings of the form, uh, let's say, AZ plus C, and see that the, the overall effect is both translations, rotations, scalings, and all combined together. Um, so, so yeah, I think uh, let's continue with uh, uh, maybe a couple more examples uh, along these lines and um, in the next part of the video. And um, uh, yeah, see you, see you soon. Thanks.